it, it says, even if an animal takes a human life, that animal should then be put to death. Uh, th- I mean, that just shows you how valuable human life is in God's eyes. That even if an animal, you know, kills a human being. You know, the other day I was, I, I've been going on walks in our neighborhood. Because, you know, the first part of the quarantine, we just were eating a lot of food. <laughs> now we got we to gotta get back to reality here. So, uh, so I've been taking, and we've got kind of like this loop in our neighborhood. And I'm, taking the, I'm walking on this loop. And the other day there was this, uh, this young guy, uh, and he's walking on the other side of the street. And he's got a pit bull. And the pit bull is going nuts, barking, jumping at me. You know, and he's got it on a leash. And in my opinion, the, the leash seemed a little flimsy for a pit bull. Uh, and the guy did not look very serious about restraining this pit bull. Uh, but the, his dog is going crazy. Uh, and I've, I've only been attacked by a dog once in my life. It was by a pit bull. Uh, I was at a friend's house in college. I went to a friend's house and their dog came out. And lit- I'm not kidding. This is exactly what happened. Dog comes out and I said to my friend, hey, this looks like a pit bull. And then it whoosh, like latched onto my arm and attacked me. It was a pit bull. I was right. <laughs> I knew it. So I'm a little, you know, I don't like pit bulls. Uh, so I'm walking down the street. This dog's on the other side and it is going crazy. And he's just like on this nice stroll but the whole time I'm walking like looking over at this guy and I'm sure this guy thought I was afraid of him but I was afraid of his dog Uh, but you know here it says even if an animal takes a human's life that animal should be put to death I wasn't really thinking about that verse at the time (laughs) should have said you know what the Bible says Let's just go ahead and put your dog to death because it's obvious he wants to kill me. The the intent is there. But you know, you don't see a similar law for animals that are killed by humans. You don't see that in the Bible. If an animal kills a human, the animal should be put to death. But if a human kills an animal, there's there's no law, there's no command in the Bible about putting that human to death. These animals aren't made in the image of God. Man, Mankind... And animals are not equal. Only mankind is uniquely made in the image of God and therefore has uh, intrinsic value and worth to God. Above the animals, mankind's life is valuable to God. All human life is valuable to God. And an assault on a human, human being is an assault on, on God. That's, that's, that's what this law is saying here. You know, you see in the New Testament, uh, when Jesus appeared to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus, uh, Jesus said to Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul was persecuting Christians. That's the same as persecuting Jesus. Right? And so to harm a human being, uh, that human being is made in the image of God. And so that is an attack on on God. So, we go on here. It tells us that the, the, the killer, the perpetrator, should be put to death according to God. Because man is made in the image of God. So taking a human life is an attack on God. So that person who takes a human life should be put to death according to God. Not, not put in prison for life. Not put in prison without the opportunity for parole. Do you understand, like with with our justice system, and I'm not not criticizing, and I'm just saying, uh, our justice system is, we want to take the criminal off the street to protect society. The way that God looks at it is, is, no, the, the, the human being they killed has value. And, and so you're, you're, you're punishing them because of the value of the person they killed, not because of the danger they are to society, right? So for us, we're focused on the person who perpetrates the crime. God is focused on the value of the person who was killed. And the decision is made on the value of the person that was killed. So it's, just, it's, a, different, it's a different focus 
Verse 6 now says, Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed, for in the image of God he made man. And again, now this is also the basis of, of human government. Human government's most basic role is to protect human life and exact justice when life is taken. Uh, if you want to flip with me over to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. It says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Verse 2. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good. And you have praise from the same, for he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. It's talking about capital punishment there, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. So that's the role of the government is to execute wrath on him who practices evil, protecting the population, punishing violators, That's the role of the government ordained by God. Verse 7 says, As for you, be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply in it. Now, God told them this back in verse 1. He's repeating it here in verse 7. I think God really wants them to get the population going here, right? You know, be fruitful and multiply. I know I just said this six verses ago, but let me remind you again, be fruitful and multiply. And multiply. There's only eight people on the earth at this point. Then God spoke to Noah, verse 8, and to his sons with him, saying, And as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. Thus I establish my covenant with you. And here's the covenant. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And once again, we see the language here. It's talking about a global flood. It wasn't a regional flood. Uh, it, it destroyed the whole earth and every living thing on the earth, except for that which was on the ark. And so God establishes his covenant here with Noah and Noah's descendants. And so this, this includes us today. This is a covenant that applies to us, we're, we're part of this covenant as Noah's descendants. A covenant is an agreement or a pledge between two parties. It's kind of like a contract in our day. God made a covenant with Noah in his family, his descendants, including us. And here's the covenant. God promised he would not wipe out the earth with a flood ever again. Otherwise... Anytime there's a cloud in the sky, you'd think, oh no, here we go. Head for the hills. It's gonna, he's going to do it again. Anytime you hear thunder, you'd panic. So God here establishes this covenant saying, I'm never going to wipe out the earth again with a global flood. 